near blockchain data flow might be a bit tricky at a glance, but it is pretty straightforward and follows well-defined rules. In this video, we are going to have a closer look at how the data flows in near blockchain. In fact, any blockchain flow can be represented as an infinity timeline that has a start but has no end. And the block appears on that timeline with some interval. Each of these blocks holds the information about the previous one, thus creating a chain of blocks. Near blockchain has a sharded nature, meaning that more than one parallel network called a shard can be live at any moment, and each shard produces a chunk of a block at a given interval. A block in near blockchain is a collection of the block chunks from all shards. Block chunk is shortened to chunk in near protocol documentation. So, returning to the data flow itself, the best we can do is to imagine tracks like we could see in audio-video editing apps. Each shard has its own set of tracks. The top track is for chunks. They appear no matter what at a given interval. For near blockchain, the interval is about one second. Chunks are being produced even if nothing is happening on the blockchain. But what do we mean by saying something is happening? We mean that something has triggered some changes in the blockchain. And the most well-known method to trigger any changes is to send a transaction to the blockchain with instructions of what we want to change and who has requested those changes. A transaction needs to be constructed, signed and sent to the blockchain. Once it is executed, we expect to have a result, execution outcome. Oh, that is simple, but it's not really accurate for near blockchain. In the beginning there is a transaction. It contains instructions we want to be executed on the blockchain. Transaction is sent to near blockchain. And yes, it is executed there immediately, but the immediate result of the transaction execution is always just an acknowledgement that it will be executed on the chain. This internal execution request is known as receipt. You can think of receipt as an internal transaction that exists to pass information across shards. It looks not so straightforward if we come back to our tracks. Let's have a look at a simple example. Assuming we have two accounts living on different shards, Alice and Bob. Alice creates a transaction to send a few tokens to Bob. The transaction is immediately executed and the execution outcome for the transaction is always a receipt. But the receipt cannot be executed here because Bob doesn't live on the same shard as Alice, so the receipt must be executed on the receiver's shard. So the receipt is moving to the shard where Bob lives. On the Bob's shard, the receipt is executed and the process is considered as finished. Today we have learned the main principles of how data is flowing in your protocol. We have found out that transactions execute and the execution outcome of the transaction is always a receipt. Now we know that receipt is a main internal asset for near blockchain and it has a power of traveling between shards. We learned the near data flow on a simple example, of course in real life with more complex transactions that involve cross-contract calls, there will be more receipts and execution outcomes. You would be able to read about it in the docs by yourself. I hope this video was useful and see you in our next videos.